gastrointestinal cancers. Do the sexual practices of the LGBTQ community predispose us to increased rates of gastrointestinal cancers? The C word, cancer. It's scary. And in this video, I'm going to talk to you about how we can potentially distance ourselves from developing some of these types of cancers. What you can do to mitigate your risk of getting these things. This week, I'm specifically talking about colorectal and anal cancers. Whenever we're talking about issues down there, it can be a little awkward. And just know that that's normal. It's okay to feel awkward. Don't avoid these conversations just because it can be awkward to talk about or uncomfortable. After all, these providers are trained to take care of you. You are the priority. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Jonathan Lucero McKinney and I am a first year physician assistant student passionate about LGBTQ plus health. Each week I cover a topic as it relates to my studies in school and I do a little bit more research and find a journal publication that characterizes how it uniquely affects our community. The publication this week is entitled Cancer and LGBTQ Populations, written by Quinn and colleagues in the CA Cancer Journal. Right now, I'm studying the GI tract or the gastrointestinal tract in school. And what does that mean? It's everything from mouth to anus, hole to hole, front to back, the food tunnel. Okay, you get the picture. And the pieces that I'm specifically covering today that are covered in the publication are the colon, the rectum, and the anus which are really the last parts of the GI tract, the grand finale, the home stretch. <laughs> There's a lot of GI puns. And so this grand stretch sort of starts, if you look at your abdomen on the right side, on the lower side, it starts right down there. That's sort of where your ascending colon begins. You start there, you come up around towards the, you know, towards your ribs up here, across your belly, you follow your colon and then down. And then of course, you know where the rectum and the anus are. And actually colorectal cancer is the third most common cause of cancer in the United States. But how does that break down by gender identity and sexual orientation? Are we at increased risk? Are we safer? Does anal sex increase the risk of any of these types of cancers? What about from other issues? So the publication is a review article, meaning that it looks at a bunch of different other articles of research and it pulls it into one sort of review of the data. First thing I wanna talk about that's cited in this publication is the California Health Interview Survey. They talked to over 51,000 men and over 71,000 women. They gathered information on their sexuality and they found that there was actually no difference between heterosexual individuals and lesbian, gay, or bisexual individuals. Now, some other separate studies said, yes, there is a difference based on sexuality and this was largely a geographic difference. But what we do know is that there are several risk factors for colorectal cancer. And these are advanced age, a history of polyps in the colon, a family history of any of these cancers, obesity, smoking, and alcohol. Notice that sexual identity is not cited as a risk factor. However, there are studies out there that shows that the LGBTQ population generally uses more alcohol, uses more cigarettes, and may be more obese which are all risk factors for colorectal cancer. But there has been no direct link between sexuality and these lifestyle habits, such as smoking, drinking, and maintaining a increased body weight. Regardless, if you're LGBT, heterosexual, anything, you need to be screened for colorectal cancer based on your risks and your own specific profile. And it's so important that you talk to your provider about this. Now, if we jump a little bit further in the GI tract, that just, I said that. Yep, I said it. And we talk about anal cancer. All in all, it's a pretty rare disease. Rare as in only two per 100,000 individuals. That's just about 0.2% of the population. But men who have sex with men have over twice that risk at a 5.1 people per 100,000 people uh, will get anal cancer. And if you have HIV, that number skyrockets to 45.9 out of 100,000 people. The true risk with anal cancer here is HPV. Yes, HPV, human papilloma virus. It is a human carcinogen and it is implicated in about 80% of anal cancer tumors. It is transmitted through infected skin contact, such as the anogenital region, mucous membranes, and even during sex 
or oral sex through bodily fluids. HPV has a ton of different strains. Some are higher risk, some are lower risk. Some tend to cause anal cancers, where some tend to cause anal anogenital warts. And you may have heard of HPV being implicated with cervical cancers. And if you have a cervix, this is one of the reasons that we get pap smears to investigate the presence of HPV and any sort of cellular changes that are going on in the cervix. Now, of course, men who have sex with men are at higher risk of anal cancer because of bottoming, or as the medical literature puts it, receptive anal intercourse. Some other risk factors of this include increased number of sexual partners or multiple current sexual partners, other coexisting sexually transmitted infections, cigarette smoking, and immunosuppression, such as HIV. So most of these risk factors, you can kind of do something about. Am I saying to stop having anal sex? Absolutely not. Just try to be more mindful of this and recognize that HPV is associated with anal cancers, just like HPV is associated with cervical cancer. In the publication, it cited a lack of information and a lack of knowledge about this very topic. Condoms can help. They can help both prevent HIV and HPV. Um, but it's important to note that those of you on pre-exposure prophylaxis or PrEP, that this doesn't do anything to decrease the chance of getting HPV. There's no safety net from PrEP to HPV. But you can get vaccinated to save yourself from getting various strains of HPV. And so whether you top or you bottom, getting this vaccine can really help reduce your risk of getting anal cancer. All right, so that is colorectal and anal cancers. And I know that it can be very difficult to talk about, to listen to. Um, you may be listening to this with headphones in and away from someone, which I don't blame you. I think a lot of this material and a lot of LGBTQ issues ties back to the trust that you will need to have with your provider. The fact that you feel understood and heard and that your issues are considered. We do have unique health issues and it's one of the main reasons I started this channel is to bring light to these issues and hopefully that you gain some more comfort in bringing them up to your provider and just to know that providers are trained to help you through these things. And it is crucial that you and your provider are on the same page. All right, that's it for this week. Uh, next week, I have my final exams and it's going to be brutal. I have seven exams in one week. So we'll see about a video next week. I'm not too sure about it, uh, but I will, I will do my best. Granted, at the time of recording this, I think I have eight or nine subscribers, so I don't think anyone is really missing too much. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I am not doing it for subscriber count. If it's just one subscriber that actually takes this information to heart, goes forward, and it saves them some sort of health fiasco, it's worth it. All right, please like, share, and comment. I'd appreciate it if you subscribe to stay up to date with the things that I'm putting out. Um, but if not, that's fine too. And for now, I'm signing out. Bye.